Well, today's episode is a reminder of some of the key ways that attracting talent actually begins with us. This war for talent is in full swing, and every single company and organization is trying to attract the very best talent they can find. The the old model of thinking around attracting talent certainly is just, you just go out there and certainly the free agent market is on, you find the best, the most talented people, you go directly to them, you offer them a job, you pay them a little bit more than somebody else might, and then here you go, you're off and running. And there you have a new employee, they have a new job, and, and here we go. And at some points, maybe in our history, it was as simple as that. Is that they're not just looking for a job. They're not just looking for a place that's going to pay them a little bit more than, than, than another job. They're actually looking for a fit and an attraction to a culture that's bigger than them. Welcome back to The Thermostat with Jason Barger. If you're currently on a commute, a walk, or just a micro break in your day, Glad you're making time to step back, to think, and to reflect on the next steps on your journey. I've never been more convinced. The best leaders and team cultures in the world are the ones that make time to step back and calibrate their thermostat. I hope today's conversation leaves you feeling grounded and inspired. Now let's dive into today's topic to engage our minds and hearts in order to authentically lead and create compelling cultures wherever we are in the world. Hey everybody, it's Jason and welcome back to the Thermostat Podcast. Wherever you are or however you're coming to the conversation today, welcome, glad you're here, so glad to uh, that you're back. If you are new to the podcast, welcome. Uh, if you are somebody that's been here since day one, welcome back, so glad that you are here. I'm glad that you are making time in your day, in your week, in your month, whatever that might be for you to step back, for you to uh, be able to recalibrate your own thermostat, to be able to step back, to think, to hopefully be filled by, with some some positive mojo and some messages that are going to help you along your journey, wherever that may be in your life and work, and thinking about how you move your own leadership uh, in your life again, and then certainly with the culture of the people around you that you are uh, you know, a uh, part of in your own life, but also certainly in your work. So wherever you are today, welcome. Glad you are here. I am more convinced of this than ever, as you know, uh, that authentic leadership, authentic leadership is needed in the world today. And we need to be creating compelling cultures. So with the people around us and with the teams and organizations, those that are navigating their through, way through all that's happening in the world are the ones that are part of together, co-creating a culture together with the people around there. So if you will do me a favor as we begin today's episode, if you do me a quick favor, just take literally 30 seconds, 60 seconds, whatever that is, to just quickly rate this podcast five stars, of course. Leave a review, a nice review about this a podcast. Think about who in your life and work you could just share this, send a link to somebody and say, hey, I think this is something that you would enjoy. All of those ways that we rate review, share the podcast, whether we like it or not, that's the way that these messages are amplified further into the world. That's the way the algorithms find it, help other people uh, find it and access the podcast. So thank you, thank you, thank you to everybody who helps amplify uh, this podcast. I really appreciate it. Uh, This season, we've been talking about that term that so many people have been talking about, this idea of the future of work, if you've heard that phrase. And, you know, companies around the globe are transitioning, are certainly uh, with the worker shortage, with uh, the, the rate of change with all of the political uncertainty and economics uncertainty and a global pandemic and all the things that we have been experiencing uh, over the, the last two years. Uh, the future of work is still being created, and, and many people are trying to guess what that future of work is going to look like, and the reality is we together are going to discover and create the future of work. Leaders, teams, and organizations are going to create the environments and not just what we do, but how we do the work together. So in the midst of terms that we've been talking about on this podcast, like the great resignation, like the big shift, these things that maybe you've heard throughout uh, 
uh, the news and certainly throughout any articles around business, then you know that right now how we navigate our way through all that we are experiencing, the mindset that we bring, how we show up, and how we then align with the people around us is as significant as ever. So uh, the last episode that, that we just had was a look back at last year's Thermostat Cultures live event, one of the segments that we did from last year's Great Thermostat Cultures live event last year in the midst of the pandemic. It was a fully virtual event, which uh, you know was what we had to do, but ended up being exactly what we needed at the time. The voices that we need to, needed to hear from, the messages of authentic leadership and creating culture, even in the midst of a pandemic that none of us have ever experienced in our lives was exactly what we all needed. And certainly the the feedback, the evaluations, the all that that, that, that we received from people, uh, you know, echoed that very uh, that very thought. So uh, I hope you enjoyed the last episode. A, a look back at, at one of the conversations that we had, the conversations that was the the con the, 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 the currency for change. So conversations that are the currency for change. So Today, we're going to talk about the keys to attracting talent to your team or your organization. Again, with this term, the big shift that is happening right now, where 7.6 million people, you know, in the months of April, May, uh, up and resigned from their jobs across the United States, and this started this big shift, this war for talent, this this talent kind of shifting from organization to organization, that this war for talent is in full swing, and every single company and organization is trying to attract the very best talent they can find. They're, of course, they're, I mean, we've always been trying to attract talent, but certainly in the world that we're in right now, every team and organization is trying to attract the best talent they can find to their team and organization. Well, today's episode is a reminder of some of the key ways that attracting talent actually begins with us. Attracting talent begins with you. Attracting talent actually begins on the inside before it even reaches anyone on the outside. So, you know, there's old school thinking uh, where... You, you know, the, the old model of thinking around attracting talent certainly is just you just go out there and certainly the free agent market is on. You find the best, the most talented people. You go directly to them. You offer them a job. You pay them a little bit more than somebody else might uh, or any of the competition. And then, uh, you know, you find them uh, and they come in and then here you go. You're off and running and there you have a new employee. They have a new job. And, and here we go. And at some points, maybe in our history, it was as simple as that. But as we know, with everything we've been experiencing in the world, and again, the big shift and the war for talent that is on, we know that it is not as simple as that. Every single company that I am currently working with and supporting, uh, every single one of them has a work shortage of some sort. Finding people. And not just finding people, not just finding warm bodies, but finding talented people that are then going to be aligned and wanting to be a part of the culture that they are trying to create. That is one of the biggest challenges that teams and organizations are experiencing. So the reality is, is that old model, well, maybe it worked at some point when people just quote unquote wanted a job and you can go out there and you could find a talented person and you could offer them a little bit more money uh, than, than another job that they were considering and then you could attract them and bring them into your organization. Maybe that worked at some point, but I'm, I'm, I'm beginning to be more convinced that that really never was the case, that maybe that happened, but really as we look at this, maybe... Um, just relying on that, this kind of recipe for go find hire, uh, really that we need to, to peel the onion back a little bit. And then we realize that retaining talent and attracting talent, that it really begins on the inside, that it's about, do we have an awareness and a recognize the culture that we are trying to create on the inside? We often think that, you know, we're trying to just find an attractive person and pull them to us. But the reality is, is that many of the people out there in the world are looking at us and they're looking at you and they're asking the question of, is that culture, is that team, is that organization, is it attractive to me? 
And so today's employee, they realize, and, and again, the research backs this up, that they nine out of every 10 employees that are surveyed say that they would rather take a pay cut. They, they, would, they would actually opt to take a pay cut to work for a more meaningful culture. And so in the midst of this shortage of talent, the reality is, is the people that are out there looking is that they're not just looking for a job. They're not just looking for a place that's going to pay them a little bit more than, than, than another job. They're actually looking for a fit and an attraction to a culture that's bigger than them, where they feel like they are going to be a contributor, that the culture that they want is bigger than self it's a spot where they're going to feel appreciated. It's a, a spot where they're going to be given not just a job, but where it's going to utilize their strengths, where they feel like they have a voice, and they also feel cared for as a whole person. And so the attraction of that person actually begins on the inside. Do we as a team and as an organization, are we clear on the culture that we're trying to create? Not just the story that we're telling, but is it actually authentic for what people are experiencing? And then as people are looking for it, and they do they find that, that they are going to be somebody who's able to contribute their strengths, their voice, they're going to feel cared for, and that they are going to become a co-creator in that culture. So the world of attracting talent is as much an inside game as an outside game. Attracting the talent begins with you. It begins with me. It begins with us internally before we can even look externally. So let me explain more in just a minute. But until then, let's take a quick pause and break and we'll be right back. Hey, everybody, it's Jason. Just a quick reminder that Friday, October 29th is coming very quickly. Thermostat Cultures Live. Uh, this year, a hybrid event. I couldn't be more excited about the voices that are joining me, and the it's going to be another powerful day. Don't quote me on this, but there are only a few limited VIP seats for the in-person event that are left. So if you're wanting to be a part of that, please jump on that quickly. Uh, there are virtual seats and access codes still available. So if you are you or your team want to be a part of this great event on Friday, October 29th, I hope you'll go to thermostatculturesLive.com. Hope to see you there and have you as a part of these powerful conversations and day of development. See you then. Attracting talent begins with you. It begins with me. It begins with us. It's an internal game first. Before we worry externally about those people that we're trying to attract, we need to make sure that our house is in order on the inside. Is the culture that we are trying to attract them to, is it attractive to somebody else? Is it recognizable and aligned with the story that we're telling? And so let's talk about a few keys uh, right now to making sure that from the inside, our culture is a culture that's worthy of attracting somebody else. And so there are a few keys that I want to focus on quickly in this podcast. One, internal clarity of the culture. In order to be attractive to somebody externally, we need to make sure that we internally have clarity of the culture. You can't sell anyone on why they ought to be attracted to you unless you are clear and bought in and sold on you. This is a classic uh, example. Even you go back and think about your younger days when you were dating, trying to find a, a partner or find somebody that you were going to date. You, you can't attract somebody to, to like you until you are comfortable in your own skin, until you know who you are, and until you are able to then represent then it's amazing how the right person shows up when you are authentically you, and that's what they ultimately are attracted to. So the same thing is true within teams and organizations is our own internal clarity of the culture, the attraction has to begin with us. We can't sell anyone else on why they ought to be attracted to us unless we internally are clear, are bought in, and sold on the culture that we are actively trying to create. So you and your team will more authentically be able to attract others when the culture that you are selling is authentic. We can only attract externally what we are clear about 
internally. So is your internal, internally within your team and organization, are you clear on that culture that you're trying to create? And is it authentic for you all right now? The second key is that your posters are in your people. I say all the time that posters are important, meaning we need, the best teams and organizations, uh, you know, we need to have language that helps drive the behavior we want. And so posters in many organizations, they are communicating core values. They are communicating messages that are langu- help us with language that tries to drive the behavior that we want. And so we know that posters on the wall are important because it helps remind us and point us in the direction of that language, that culture we're trying to create. But we also know that it's not just about having good posters. Any team and organization can have good posters. But then the question is, are your posters actually in your people in are, are your is the words that you're putting on those poster it, the, the, the language that you're putting on the wall that you're that narrative that you're telling externally that this is who we are is it then in alignment with the way that people show up in action and behavior every every day within your organization is the thinking acting and interacting in alignment with those posters so that people, as they experience your culture, do they see that, oh, not only do they have great posters, but the posters are actually in their people. And so do the values radiate from your people in a way that others from the outside can see and can feel? The third point I would make after in internal clarity of culture, you got to have internal cl- clarity of culture you got to then take a step back and and ask yourselves, are your posters actually in your people? Are are the values radiating throughout your people? The third thing I I would remind you of is that attracting talent, that one of the keys of it is onboard, the onboarding strategy begins now. The onboarding and attraction of new talent, it begins now. Onboarding a new person into your team culture doesn't just begin on day one. Oftentimes within our teams and organizations, once we get through the hiring process, we believe that once they're hired, that the onboarding begins at day one. Well, the reality is, is that onboarding begins well before that. Onboarding begins, you know, in the midst of that entire hiring process. In fact, onboarding begins from the very first messages that they ever the, the person that you are attracting out there in the world ever hears about you or sees about you. And so onboarding a new person in your team culture doesn't just begin on day 1, it begins right now. Or if depending on where you are along that process, it began a, a long time ago. How you are branding yourself, your team, your organization, The message you are sharing with the world, the narrative and reputation about you in the world, the people you are trying to attract will have a first impression of you and the onboarding begins then, not now. And so beginning to think about and making sure that you, as you, as you think about your, your strategy for attracting talent is to, to realize that it's an, it's an inside job first, meaning we have to have internal clarity on the culture and on who we really are before we can even sell anybody else on that. We need to make sure that internally that our, our posters aren't just good posters on the wall, but our posters are in our people and the values are radiating throughout our people. We need to realize that the messages, the branding, the story, the narrative that, that we, not only we are telling out in the world, but hopefully others are telling, that that's really where the onboarding be, begins, is that first impression that we're having. So what is the first impression we are sharing with people? Because at that first impression is when the onboarding actually begins and that's where either the people that we are trying to attract take one step closer to us or when one step further away from us. And then the fourth and last key uh, reminder that I have for today in terms of attracting talent in the world today is that we have to adopt a whole person mentality, a whole person mentality. Research continues to tell us that people don't just want a job 
and don't just want pay. Time and time again, the research is telling us this, that that even when people tell us, yeah, yeah, I just want a job, just tell me what to do, get out of my way and let me do it, or they say, I just need you to pay me, so uh, pay me a fair wage and I'm good, That's even when people say that, that's not what the research says. The research continues to tell us that people don't just want a job and don't just want pay. They actually want a place where they can be a part of a meaningful culture that is bigger than them, plays to their strength, a place where they have a voice and they can contribute. They also want a place that cares about them as a whole person, not just a number uh, or a job description or a statistic as a part of a bigger organization. More and more in the world today, people want to recognize and want to feel like the company and the organization that they are partnering with, that the organization itself, the leaders, the team is actually partnering with them as a whole person, a human being, which means that they actually care for, do you have, yes, those, those uh, you know, non-negotiable things, like do you have a fair wage? Do you have then roles and a role and a responsibility that we're asking you to play? Of course, those are the non-negotiable parts of it. But do they do they also have a care for you as a human being? What are your interests as a person outside of work? What is your family structure or that vision you have for your own life and how we can help support you to yes do a great job for us and the mission that we're trying to to uh, to accomplish together, but we also recognize that we want to support things you care about and things that are important to you. Uh, they want to they want to know that the organization that they are working for cares for them as a human being, thinks about how can I support you, develop you, raise you up so that you can continue to develop as a human being and therefore be better at your performance along the way. The best cultures are attracting people by their ability to listen to them, to think creatively, uh, to think creatively about role function and responsibilities and aligning their, their gifts and strengths in creative ways and find ways to support, quote unquote, the whole person kind of thinking, which means listening, actively beginning those conversations about what your employees and your team members care about. And then, by the way, it. You know, all of this often leads to better performance. So taking that whole person mentality from the beginning begins to build a more authentic relationship with your people and begins this uh, that the goal isn't just to cross things off your to do list or just your job function, but actually it's to develop and help support you as a human being. And oh, by the way, all of the performance metrics and measures typically follow. So attracting talent actually begins with you. It begins with me. It begins with us. It's an inside game first. And it means we have to have these key reminders that we need to have internal clarity of the culture that we want to create together. We need to to think about are our posters in our people? Are the values radiating throughout our team and throughout our organization? We need to think about that onboarding strategy begins now. Our onboarding strategy begins now. So what's the narrative? What's the reputation? What's the brand that people are experiencing out in the world? Because that's truly when the attraction will either begin or will begin to disappear. And then lastly, we need to embrace that whole person mentality and begin the conversations about our job as an employer isn't just to give you a job, a task, and then expect you to to hit performance. Our job is actually to bring you in so that you are a co-creator in our culture. We are partners with you for your life and developing you. And oh, by the way, together, we're going to raise the bar and the standards on your performance. But it starts with having a whole person mentality. Calibrating our personal thermostat for our own awareness and our own response and and calibrating our social awareness and relationship development as a team, it all begins with our thinking, acting, and interacting. We are the thermostats. 
our own internal temperature sets a temperature externally for others based on our response and our behaviors. So attracting talent actually begins on the inside of how we think about ourselves, how we think about our culture, our team, and then what we can radiate externally to those around us. So the culture can be transformed by how we show up and how we set that temperature and the feeling around us. So as always, I want to leave you with some questions for you to ponder for your own life, your own work, your own team around you. So the questions for this week are, is your team or your organization clear on the inside? Are you guys clear on the inside of the culture that you are trying to create and sell externally? Can you articulate it? What Are you clear on the culture that you're trying to create be, internally before you try to sell it externally? Are your posters in your people? Are your posters in your people? Not just do you have posters and clarity around the values that you hope to drive the behavior that you want, but are your posters in your people? What are the stories, the narratives, the first impressions that you are giving to the external world? And are they the stories, the narratives, the first impressions that you want? And is your culture only focused on a job task or function or caring for the whole person and performance caring for the whole person and performance thank you for tuning in today i hope you'll keep tuning in on the next episode we're going to be talking about the role of leaders and employees in fact i'm going to be i'm going to be sharing a love letter to both leaders and employees and with uh, a message of how you can help each other leaders and team members leaders and employees contributors how can you help each other how can you how can both perspectives from that leadership perspective or that teammate or contributor perspective how can you help each other in this changing world remember the best leaders teams and cultures on the planet continue to stimulate progress by recalibrating their thermostats together thank you for listening to today's podcast And I hope the messages and questions stimulate positive change along your path. As always, if these messages resonate with you and add value to your life, I hope you'll help amplify them throughout the world. Please rate, comment, and share on whatever podcast or social media platform you're using. And share this podcast with the people in your life or work who should be part of these conversations. That way, this spirit does in fact, spread. If these messages or developing leaders and culture would be helpful to your organization, or you have a question or comment about this podcast, please contact us at jasonvbarger.com. And remember, we all are ambassadors for the culture we want to create in our life and work. We have to own the vision we want to be a part of. The future of leadership is you is me, is us, be a thermostat.